So today we're going to be talking about comparative anatomy of different tetrapods. We're going to start with the human vertebra. And with the human vertebra, we have seven cervical vertebra. We have 12 thoracic. And then we have five lumbar. When we get down to below the lumbar, we have four to five that fuse to form the sacrum, which belongs to the pelvic girdle. And then we have what's left of what's called our tailbone, but it's called our coccyx. This is about four to seven fused vertebra. Now starting with function of the vertebra in the humans, it is there for support, it's there for attachment of ribs, and it's also for locomotion, for movement. Most of our movement is limited to our cervical spine and our lumbar spine. There is a little bit of movement in our thoracic spine, but most of the function here is for attachment of ribs and helping form our thoracic cage. You can also see that the vertebra house the spinal cord. So that is also one protective mechanism. And you can see spinal nerves coming out at the cervical thoracic and lumbar levels. You will also find nerves coming out at the lower sacral level too as well. Now let's compare this to other animals. All right, next we're going to look at avian vertebra. Avian vertebra is adapted for flight. Okay, it has limited movement, so you prevent the loss of energy during flight. In the cervical region of the avian vertebra, this can have 8 to 25 vertebra depending on the size of the bird. This is a pigeon, so a little bit on the shorter side. It's very flexible. Birds can turn their heads up to 180 degrees. So this aids as a shock absorber. It also aids in the reaching for food on the ground. And it also aids in the adjustment of the center of gravity. So when they change from standing position, which the bird is in right now, to a flight position, that head will shift or change positions. The next region we have is the dorsal region. This is similar to the thoracic region in humans, and it has attachments for ribs on the side. This is about six to 10 fused vertebra. So unlike the humans, the humans do have movement between their thoracic vertebra, the bird does not. And this keeps the stability of the bird during flight and prevents the loss of energy. Now we move on, we have a syncecrum, and that is this area. This is a special area to the birds. And this is about 10 to 22 fused vertebra and it is fused to the pelvis on the sides for support while they're standing, so for bipedial motion. As we move down, we have our caudal region. This is five to 10 vertebra, and this is for attachment of feathers and for control of those feathers during flight. Towards the end, we have a pygostyle this is four to seven fused vertebra. And this is also for attachment of feathers, locomotion, and for some behavioral adaptations, such as during mating practices. The next tetrapod that we will move on to is the frog. When we look at the vertebra of a frog, which is an amphibian, it's very short. It doesn't have much of a neck region or a cervical region. Most of the movement of a frog is limited to the pelvic region, and they mostly do their motions in the vertical plane, up and down. Now with the cervical region, we do have one cervical vertebra, and it limits the head motion to up and down motions, or ventral to dorsal, ventral meaning forward, dorsal meaning towards the back. When we get into the dorsal region, this is similar to the thoracic region in humans. There is no rib, so you won't find any attachment to ribs. It is about four to eight vertebra. Not much movement in here. The last vertebra down here is a sacral vertebra. There is only one. 
and it has an attachment to the pelvis. Most of the movement does occur here. This would be your sacroiliac joints. So when the pelvis moves for jumping, there is increased motion in these areas. The last part we have is the Eurostyle. This is a fused tailbone similar to the coccyx. Um, during development, the frog did lose their tail and this is what was left as the remnant, similar to the coccyx in humans. The next tetrapod that we're going to move to is the turtle. This is from the reptile family. Their spine is used for movement on land and water. We're going to start with the cervical spine. The cervical spine consists of about eight vertebrae. It's very flexible in this area, so the head could fold, meaning jut out and then fold back inward for protection and for gathering of food. When we get to the dorsal region, this is similar to the thoracic region in the humans. It does have attachments to ribs, which then attach to its outer shell, called the carapace. We get down further, we have the sacrum down here. It's about two to three fused vertebra. It's not fused to its outer shell. This is attached to the pelvis for locomotion of the limbs, the lower limbs. And then finally, we have the caudal vertebra. This is similar to the coccyx in humans, so this is their tailbone. It consists of 12 plus vertebra, and actually it's different in males versus females. Males tend to have longer caudal vertebras than females.